captain's eye here. It is June 23rd or 24th, AKA the end of June. Uh, if you've seen the previous video, Pennsylvania boat broke down again or something titled like that. I know it's live right now. And then if you watch a few videos prior to that, my boat broke down on the river or something like that, um, including a couple of times that I never made videos for, but um, the boat's been giving me a lot of issues. Um, here at Cabela's, going to pick up the boat now and uh, figured today would be the day that I'll do a honest three year review of my Tracker Pro 170, it's a 2020. Um, this is my fourth season with it. I just hit the three year anniversary back in March of when I bought it and brought it home. Um, so I'm gonna give you my uh, honest opinion today. This is the third, if not fourth time, I think fourth time in and out that I brought it in for these same issues. Um, at first it was potentially the kill switch or relay on the motor and then it wasn't either or and loose wiring or something. I jimmied it, I did what I could. Now they replaced the ignition today. So I'm uh, picking it up and then taking it out to go fish just for a few hours. Um, of course, it's supposed to rain today, the day that I picked it up. It's been here since May 9th. So about six weeks it took them to get to it, um, which is kind of unfortunate. You know, Luckily we fly fish, um, so we've been able to take plenty of good trips. I didn't miss out on any fishing, but I did miss out on fishing on the boat. Well, there she is, boys and girls. I've missed her. It's been six weeks since I've seen her. So aside from the electrical problems, I really haven't had any other issues, but I'll go over all that on the water. But I've been very nice and patient with these guys uh, here at Cabela's. Uh, it's under warranty. Uh, when you buy a tracker boat, I believe it comes with a two year top to bottom. I bought mine during boat show season, unintentionally just happened to walk in that day, uh, offering a five year warranty. If you bought during that, you know, 60 day period. So I just got very lucky. So it's in its third year of uh, third to fourth year of the full warranty. So uh, I'm kind of forced to bring it here. A, because it's saving me money because I'm not having to pay for any of this, but, and B, because it's, uh, if I do anything during the warranty period, that's not authorized, I could void the warranty. So I'm basically screwed if I do anything myself or take it somewhere else and they are hip to it. I've given them the last of my good graces. I'm very patient and try to give everyone the benefit of the doubt and be kind. Definitely sick of coming up here though, I'll tell you that. Definitely sick of coming up here. I'm sure these guys are sick of seeing me too, but what do you want me to say? <sighs> um, so I picked it up. I haven't taken it out yet. We're gonna go do that now, but I'm just mad. I'm very upset. Um, I tried not to show it to them, but the boat is absolutely filthy, which can't be avoided to a certain extent, but there's boot prints all over the deck. There's a... Uh... I always keep it toothbrush clean anyway, which is beside the point, because that's on me, but I just don't feel like they give a crap here. They don't care. They have 75, 80 boats waiting to be worked on right now. Um, the mechanic guy is just always in a bad mood. Hey, how you doing? Could be a lot better, man. Have a good day. Like, they just don't care. A quote that I heard that struck me was, sales sells you your first boat and service sells you your second and third and so on. And uh, right now I don't, as of the way, I'm, I just, I'm, the way I feel right now, I don't think I'd ever buy another boat from Cabela's Tracker Boat Center. The Tracker Boat itself, I love it, but the electrical issues, hopefully that's sorted out, but I just don't feel like they care. I really don't feel like they care at all. And it, you know, it doesn't honestly make me angrier than I feel more, it makes me angry, but I feel more hurt. I know that might sound like weird or strange, but it hurts my feelings because if it was their stuff or if it was their truck or whatever they're trying to get fixed, they would put the time and effort in themselves because they have the knowledge and the wherewithal to fix their own stuff they would do it to the nines the best possible fix the most expensive parts diagnose this that and i just have never felt like they cared less than i do right now maybe it's because i'm finally picking up on that but let's get out to the water do our three-year review it's not starting off hot All right, so uh, here we are, downtown Cleveland. 
I'm gonna put in, run her for a while, start, stop, start, stop, make sure everything's ship shape, and then go fish the inside and outside of the break wall for some smallmouth, potentially a walleye or two or more. Uh, so we'll see what happens. All right, well, I'm just starting to head out of the marina. I started it, stopped it three, four times. It seems to be doing the job. As I said, they replaced the uh, kill switch last year and checked the wiring. That wasn't it. They replaced the ignition now. I did join a tracker group on Facebook with like 40 some thousand tracker owners of all makes and models. And several of them, including one guy I talked to at length said that it was the ignition. And once that was uh, reworked, reinstalled a new one, that that solved the problem so let's keep our wits about us and hope that's it i will say picking it up today on my way out there and then on my way down here to the ramp i generally don't like having anxiety about whether my boat's going to perform that's why i bought a brand new boat instead of uh buying a used one i had uncle albert's old boat loved it learned a lot on it but it was you know a learning experience because things kept going wrong so you know, spending the time, the money, the maintenance. I keep this thing toothbrush clean and it's wanting to give me trouble. You know, I'm trying to uh, avoid that moving forward, so. I've done this five or six times already, but not out on the water. I'm not very far. Seems okay for now, so let's rip around for a bit, burn some gas. Turn the key. So far, so far, so good. All right, let's keep going. We're gonna do it again. Been running it for about 20 minutes now. Running strong, knock on wood. Engine, kill switch, wait five seconds. Looks like the rain uh, is gonna miss us too. It's staying north, so maybe I'll just hang out here all afternoon. But I wanna run it another 20 minutes and then start fishing. So, all right, kill switch, start. So if you watch those videos, what it was doing was, I'm gonna save some gas. Um, it would crank and crank and crank and crank like it wanted to start but would not and then I would jiggle the kill switch and it would start and then not then not then not then start then not then jiggle the kill switch and start so last year when this happened uh, you can go watch all those vlogs so let's uh do the three-year review that i've promised you for the past like 10 12 minutes uh sorry that it took so long to get into this but i wanted to explain the problems and uh the backstory on the issues that i have been having i wanted a boat 17 18 feet a little bit bigger than the old one which was 16 feet i uh, went up to my local 40 minutes away local which is annoying driving 40 45 minutes each way to drop off or pick up the boat um, Cabela's Tracker Boat Dealership and looked at those boats. I walked in, I saw this exact boat. Uh, it was in black and it had the carpet, but I saw this boat, looked at the price, looked at my budget um, and decided that I was gonna go with this. Um, I wanted a jet drive. The motor on this is a Mercury four stroke, 40 horsepower jet drive. Uh, meaning it's just like a jet ski. It's got a, an impeller and an expeller, I'm guessing it's called. I'm not really sure. The jet itself. Um, I've had it in, and you've seen, you know, less than a foot of water when the boat is on plane with the jet. It's a mod V-hull, so semi-V at the bow and then becomes a flat bottom the rest of the way. Um, you need a jet drive and a mod V or a flat bottom boat to run in those shallow waters. So, yeah, I wanted the jet drive. So it's a 40 horse. Uh, it still does 30 to 35, depending on you're going upstream or downstream, what the wind is like. Um, 
and uh, it does the job. The motors run exceptionally well the entire time. Uh, make sure and always check your impeller, take off your lower end, make sure there's no rocks and stuff does get sucked up in there. So you wanna make sure that's clear. After every four or five years, or depending on the abuse, replace the actual impeller prop. Um, Cause you know, the seal will eventually start to wear as the blades get worn by rocks and sand and stuff. So motor have no complaints, runs great and uh, has treated me well. Next, we got our Minn Kota Edge. It is a 45 pound thrust. Um, this boat is considerably heavier and longer than my previous boat, which had a 55 edge on it. On the old boat, the 55 was extraordinarily overkill. It was so nice. I mean, you could be on three and just be moving. Um, this one, I don't say it's underpowered. I think it's like the perfect match. But if you're going uh, on a river with heavier flow, which can sometimes be the case, or if there's a lot of wind in chop, um, it, you know, it doesn't drag per se, but it will, um, you know, you'll be on full power five, uh, you know, trying to keep up. Um, like I said, but on a perfect day, perfect conditions, or at least ideal conditions, it does the job. Um, has the movable foot pedal, which is nice, but I am gonna get a recessed tray at some point just so it doesn't move around. Maybe I'll miss being able to move it, but I don't think so. Um, I do want to upgrade to a 55 or 75 to have overkill on this boat. This is a 12 volt, any sort of edge with the spot lock and the remote. Um, uh, you need a 24 volt battery and 24 volt batteries are expensive as well as the bigger Minn Kotas are expensive. So next year, probably just with all the nonsense, I'm not really looking to drop a buck right now, but again, no complaints about it. It does do the job. It's performed well. Again, always take off your prop and check for line and schmutz. Um, make sure and keep your electronics pulled when you're not using it and covered and all that. Um, so Minn Kota works nice. Got the nice rubber mat on the bow. It's gotten beat up. I had Archer the dog on here and Canada and I stand on it. It's gotten a little scratched, and, uh, but it's held up very, very well. So happy with that. And it's nice just to have, you know, the, the bow deck is absolutely huge. I could lay down and sleep on this, but having that extra frontal up there is super nice. The boat came with cleats on all four corners, which is nice. Um, you got your rubber gasketed uh, bow light, which is nice. So water doesn't just get in there. Um, seat pedestal up here. I mean, they're nothing special. You know, over time, the seats, they can rock, they can roll. Um, they're not the heaviest of duty, but I never sit. Uncle Canada always does, and we haven't had issues. Um, it came with two, a bow seat and a stern seat, and, you know, they hold up fairly fine. They're not the top quality, but I can always replace those at any time. So that is okay. And there's a matching stern seat in the back as well. Same pedestal, same seat. As far as the deck itself, I did opt for the vinyl deck versus the carpet because I know how dirty carpet can get, especially over time, even if you take care of it. Um, it was like a $500 upgrade, but it's been worth its weight in gold. I can power wash it, scrub it with a brush and soap and all that. It's held up very, very well. Like I said, this is my fourth season in it, but a three year anniversary. So this is going on in the middle of four years of abuse. It's a little dirty right now because it was sitting outside for six weeks, but it's held up remarkably well and I'm very happy with it. Um, and like I said, it's just a dream to clean. We can get in and out on muddy banks or have fish blood, unfortunately, hopefully not. And it, you know, keeps its shape. It's, you know, it doesn't get too hot. It's not slippery at all. I mean, the deck is wet right now. We've been out there in the rain. I was worried that, you know, it might be a slipping hazard, but it's actually not at all. I mean, barefooted, you know, I'm given it, it doesn't, it doesn't go. So if you're considering it, definitely do it. Just the cleaning alone, super nice. So, so the deck space itself, more than enough. Uh, Uncle Canada usually fishes off the front of the boat. I like to fish off the back of the boat in case of any nonsense, I can hop right into the cockpit. Plenty of space back there, no issues. Motors mounted in a good spot and low enough. I occasionally will click the motor with a crankbait or something when I'm casting underhand, but um, plenty of space. And then the deck space up front, like I said, Canada will be up there. Um, I've fished up here behind him or over here behind him where we've stood back to back and you could definitely fish three men comfortably on this boat. Um, but yeah, he usually Minn Kota's and does up front and I'll fish off the back, even when I'm by myself, like today when I fish, if I ever decide to fish today. So more than enough deck space. Also nice that it comes right up to the console. 
and that the rod locker has deck space as well, so plenty, more than plenty. Um, let's get into storage. I do wish there was a little more storage. The old boat had virtually like none, like almost none, um, which kind of made for clogging the actual hull with gear and stuff. I've got my bag out now because I've got snacks and whatever, but um, everything has a place to be stored. So, you know, we usually have a rod or two out and uh, stuff, but everything's very nice and open because there's room for everything. I, like I said, I do wish maybe there was one compartment here or there or on both sides, but I guess not because the rod, the rod locker's right here, so maybe not on that side, but over here, um, you've got the big bow compartment. It's deep and goes back deep. Canada keeps his stuff in there when we go out, or I just keep the anchor in there. Um, occasionally the PFDs and stuff. Um, so there's plenty and plenty of room in there. Um, I want to kind of maybe put some compartments or like trays or organization, but you know, it's more than enough. The rod locker, I mean, I've got my two paddles in there, my net and two rods right now, but we've had all that gear with probably six or seven rods in there and still have room. Definitely always keep uh, rod socks on your rods to have them slide in and out better and to prevent tangling and lures getting snagged on other lines from other rods. So that's a big tip. Definitely always use rod socks, but yeah, we've had at least six, seven rods in there with the paddles and the net. Sometimes we'll throw something else in there, but super nice, spacious, and it locks, which is cool when we go to Cracker Barrel or the gas station or um, live well. We don't really ever harvest fish. So I keep the PFDs in there, ready access, and some snacks, pea cup, all that. Um, sometimes we'll throw ice in there and use it as our cooler because it's, you know, perfectly insulated and uh, will last all day, two days. So nice. I don't know the size of it, but it's got the uh, aerator and the drain underneath all that. It's got the, it came with a bait bucket. You can see the lip, but like out of every thousand fish we've caught, we harvest one, maybe two. So never really gets used, but is useful so it's nice for the pfds and snacks we throw our lunches in there and our water jugs and um definitely nice and insulated so cool beans there but yeah if you're using it for an actual live well it's you know more than enough um this spot right here is cool i used to keep the pfds in here but it's nice just to throw plano boxes and our uh, bluetooth speaker in there because it's like a speaker cone it'll really boom out so um, another huge spot I somewhat wish that it opened up from the top instead because it, sometimes it can be a pain. You got to bend over and get down in there if stuff's back in there. Um, it'd be nice if it opened from the top, but I'm not mad about it. I suppose I could always put a lid on it myself and seal that up or have them do it at the tracker joint if I ever want to take my boat back there. But it does the job. So just, you know, a little strange in design, but not mad about it. Also plenty of room underneath the console. Usually I'll put my throwable under there and use it as like a foot raft or put stuff I want to keep drier if we're running and it's choppy. Um, but yeah, plenty of room and leg room too. I could be stretched out. Um, got the under the seat storage. There's not a lot of stuff in here right now because I took everything out before I took it in, but I have like my Plano boxes with like boat essentials, you know, like uh, electrical tape and a knife and um, ponchos and goggles. So everything fits in there nicely. My fire extinguishers, extra rope, seat pedestal, flares, uh, bow and stern lights as well. So plenty of room in there. And then the big back locker also has a lock on it. Again, not much is in here right now, just some tackle and boat essentials because the boat was empty when I picked it up. I just brought out enough stuff for today, but super deep, um, super long. And again, it locks, which is nice. So uh, plenty of room back here. Canada will use the big trough up front. I'll use back here and we're both within reach of our stuff. Again, just like the front console or just like the front hatch, I kind of want to put some dividers or like a shelf or something in there just to have it be more organized, but haven't really needed to yet, but I think I'm going to. Um, so not really sure, but yeah, plenty of storage in there too, more than enough. We never run out of room. So, and then back here, battery compartment and gas tank pretty cramped back here it's an 11 gallon tank getting these batteries out uh is a pain getting them in is easier but they literally have no extra room in here for anything else so when i'm taking the batteries out or putting them in um and i try to clean in here when i do that 
it's a little bit of a hassle, but um, you know, good use of the space. I know some of the lesser model trackers, nothing against them, but have like the same amount of room, but like a five gallon, like jerry can, gas can ratcheted down in there. Um, so, but it, it's nice. Got your uh, fuel line, the ball that every boat has. Um, also got a external gas tank, which is nice because I can just pull up to the double pump with the truck and the boat, fill both up at the same time. So that's nice again. Then we have our console and control center. Pretty simple, you got your RPMs and then your uh, speedometer and then your fuel gauge. Uh, pretty basic, nav light and anchor light. Fuses are accessible, aerator and bilge. I'm not gonna turn those on, but. Um, and then the horn, which hasn't worked in a while. I forgot to have them fix that. Uh, I feel like an idiot, but whatever. Um, so pretty simple. Uh, got your ignition, you know, simple. Nice grippy wheel, uh, definitely comfortable. Not necessarily cheapy, but does the job. And then you got this uh, little phone holder here with a bungee on it, which is nice. Keeps everything secure. I put a carabiner on here with um, retractables for some nippers and then a line cutting ring and a lighter. So I have all this stuff, or Canada has all this stuff right here. Makes it nice, you know, just one clip. You could change out different tools or put even a pair of forceps or pliers on here, uh, which I should probably do. I just keep them in my bag so they don't get rusty. Um, then just this little cupola compartment, nothing really special about it. I don't really like to keep anything here. Nothing's ever flown out that I know of, but it's just not very useful, you know? But, um, then the windscreen, uh, it's nice. Could be a little bit taller. I do get some spray, but uh, generally keeps me pretty dry when I'm hunkered in and running. And I got this nice tray up here for, you know, some, some Zins. I usually keep a pair of pliers up in here. Uh, my sunglasses, a hat. If we're running, you can shove stuff down in there. Um, so it's pretty nice. And again, my bag's in here, but got all the leg room fully stretched out and good to go joe so then we got our um throttle uh trim up and down there's also trim on the motor but it's nice to have here kill switch i don't have my kill cord on here right now i probably should but forward neutral reverse pretty straightforward uh the seats seats are okay i mean they're stock factory trackers they don't have any sun damage and we've used the boat you know i think including today it's in about 50 days um 50 uses and i keep it stored in the garage so it doesn't just beat in the sun which is why it's frustrating that it's so dirty right now because it's been outside for six weeks straight in all the elements wind snow rain whatever all that um they're comfortable um they've held up pretty well um it's the same seats for both and then the exact same seats that mount on the pedestals um, at some point, you know, I don't need to right now, but you can go buy nice seats for anywhere from 40 up to two, $300, but might go spend a couple hundred bucks and just get brand new, like King of the Castle seats for right here, but they're comfortable and they fold down, which is nice for room while I'm fishing or for while we're uh, towing the boat. So no complaints there. They look nice and comfortable. And again, you could see, you know, my bag's out right now, but all my fishing gear's in here. If Canada was in here, his stuff would all be up there. Plenty of room and spaciousness and no real obstacles or stuff for your feet to trip on. Uh, the hull itself, uh, you know, nice. It's that Mod V, so it's semi v until it gets to about maybe where the pedestal is, then goes flat bottom. And with the jet, that's prime, so we can be in and have been in very, very shallow water. Uh, the paint job, it's this sparkly blue, purpley, bluish, it's got a nice fleckle to it too in the light paint. It's holding up very fine too. Um, the bunks, the carpet on the bunks is garbage and uh, peeled away, scratched up the boat a couple times when I was angling it on the river to pull it up in the current. I uh, wasn't too happy about that. So I got some like pool noodle stuff and wrapped the bunks with duct tape and it works just fine. You can replace the carpet or the bunks yourself if you want. I just spent five bucks instead of a whole project. Um, but I did buy a can of, uh, from Trackers Factory, you can call them and give them the boat model and serial number and they'll send you a can of spray paint, touch up paint, and a clear coat. So um, I'm going to do that again when I clean the boat this weekend. Um, 
I'll clean the boat really well and then see where there's blemishes or scratches and just put the touch up paint on it then clear coat it, let it dry and it looks good as new. If it's your boat, you're gonna know where stuff is or if you look up real close, you can notice it. But from afar or when the boat is clean, I mean, it's uh, a perfect thing. The can was like 20, 30 bucks, which is a little bit overpriced, but it's factory paint. You're getting it from the uh, warehouse or the manufacturer. So you know it's gonna be good. Also worth noting about the hull, I just tried to film that. I wasn't motoring, I was just idling, but it handles chop and wake very well if you know how to actually be a boater and navigate that. Um, you know, if you're sketchy and don't know what you're doing, it's gonna be an issue, but um, with any boat, but with this hull and knowledge and experience, um, handles very, very well. Um, I've been out on the lake here and at Marblehead with two, three, four, five footers, which is dangerous. Um, also on the, the Bobby Lakes where every guy's got a speedboat and they just go in circles tubing and uh, it handles very, very well. But obviously that's if you know how to take the wake and break the wake and navigate. So I think I went over everything. Um, like I said, as far as fishability, two guys, we've had three on here a couple times. It's more than perfect. Um, the electrical issues were very annoying because it took up so much time. I mean, having to take it back and forth alone, a 40 minute drive each way. Uh, to the nearest tracker center because it's under warranty meaning it's fixed for free but I have to take it to them and if I do anything myself or take it somewhere else I could void the warranty and lose uh, coverage I got two years out the gate which is standard for every tracker and then another three years so five total for the boat show season which I confirmed today they don't even offer anymore so I just happened to walk in with cash ready to buy the day uh, that they were offering that. It was like a six week thing while the boat show was here in Cleveland or whatever boat show season. Um, so it is somewhat of a hassle driving that far, but they've, you know, done work every time for free. Um, so yeah, the kill switch and the ignition were the wiring issues. Um, I haven't really had any other issues, knock on wood and all that. Uh, thank God, I guess, or not, I guess, thank God. Um, like I said, I bought it in February, 2020 and picked it up uh, March, 2020, somewhere in there. Um, and so yeah, uh, 21, 22, 23, so the three year anniversary, but my fourth season on it. And uh, caught a lot of fish, had a lot of good days, uh, had a lot of bad days too, just fishing. Um, and definitely happy with the purchase. I would just like it to stay reliable with these electrical features, but I do recommend it. Um, it's bigger and nicer than the XL or the Heritage Classics, but they do make several levels up. The uh, 175, the Pro Team uh, 190, the Pro Team 195. Bigger boats, bigger motors, bigger hulls. You uh, get more out of it, they go faster, but we don't need that. Wanted a nice and simple boat. Does 30, 35, which it does. Jet drive, which we have. Uh, Mod V hull, which it has. Um, point A to point B, cozy for fishing. Plenty of storage. Uh, nice enough features um, and it has all of that so again it's a tracker pro 170 mine's a 2020 but I know uh, the new ones are out every year and they upgrade little things here and there um, you know so definitely worth going to check them out um, I would I know the tone of this video might have started with you thinking I wouldn't but I would recommend this boat or any tracker uh, especially for the price I know my guy on Instagram, Lib to Fish, has a Pro Team 190, I want to say, and he's spoken nothing but good things about his as well. Uh, Mercury Motor, obviously name of the game, um, best in the business. So, you know, you're in good hands. As long as you take care of your stuff as well and maintain it properly, you know, you're never really going to go wrong besides uh, stuff happens, which it does. So uh, keep your wits about you. Do your own research. I know I've put up several other tracker videos, uh, how I clean it, how I winterize and get it ready for the season, um, all that other stuff. They've gotten a lot of views. I've gotten a lot of questions. A lot of people said the videos were helpful and convinced them to buy a boat, or I could answer questions for them that convinced them to or dissuade them from buying it. So hopefully you find this useful. I'll try to make this as short as possible. I probably filmed for 40 minutes. Um, but yeah, definitely happy with the boat. Fourth year in. I plan on keeping it for a while. It's holding up really well, still in good shape. But again, that's because you got to take care of your stuff and know how to use it and maintain it properly. So um, I'm going to go fishing now. So 
I might end the video here, and if I do, thank you. Please ask me questions and let me know if you want to know anything or if you think I'm an idiot and said something wrong, which I don't believe I did. Um, I hope this video helps. Check out my other Tracker Pro 170 reviews. Uh, I think I did run right when I got it. Um, did a few other videos on it, so um, I appreciate the love. Puff, puff. Uh, and hopefully we'll have some great boat trips the rest of the summer. So thank you. Puff Daddies Unite.